in the middle of the Johannesburg CBD to speak to co-founders of the really exciting technology school, Camille and Arlene. They are brilliant pioneers, social entrepreneurs. We're going in now. How are you feeling about the, are you feeling like pressure? How are you feeling that, you know, registrations are almost done and the students are about to arrive? I think we're very excited. I mean, the adventure started a year ago now and we were, we met a year ago, decided to do it. Uh, we're able to raise all the funds that we needed and now we're focusing on what is really important, which is getting the students and giving them a chance to study, which is great. Every single company out there is becoming a digital company and coding is almost like the language you need to know today. It's the new writing in a way. So it's the way that you, coding is the language that you use to talk to technology. And we just saw this incredible opportunity and I'm very passionate, I've always been about South Africa. And this model from France that we're bringing addresses quite a lot of things. First of all, the digital revolution, but then also our massive youth unemployment and then the massive skills gap that we have. There's just not enough coders out there today. Worldwide, it's a massive problem. In South Africa alone, 70,000 vacancies in the space. The problem is not that there aren't brilliant youth in South Africa. They just don't have access to these type of education models, right? Exactly. If you look at South Africa today, only about 10% of young people have a real chance to study further. There's a lot of barriers to entry, secondary education. I mean, we were voted second worst in the world. And then obviously the financial aspect as well. So we're just trying to take away as many barriers as possible and give anyone out there a chance to apply to our school. So we're saying you could be born to code, but you might just not know it yet. You could be born with the aptitude to be a world-class programmer. You don't have to have gone through a specific school or a specific degree. It is in you. It's your ability to have passion. It's your ability to want to fix problems, to think logically, and those things you can be born with. And this is why, for me at least, coming from France and bringing the model here from France, thought it was a great opportunity uh, for people here, kind yes. of tap into this untapped pool of talent, really. Now, when it comes to the, the this process that students have to go through, they have to go through a couple of phases. There's phase one, they have to take a test. Tell us about the test. So they have to apply on our website, which is borntocode.co.za. Okay. Um, and through the website, they will have to take two online tests. One is a 10 minutes memory game, and the other one is a two hours uh, problem solving game. After they've passed the test, and let me tell you, it's very hard. We're saying you don't need matric or any other diploma, but we only have a 3.5% pass rate on those tests. So not everyone is born to code. After they've passed the test, they're invited to our boot camp. And our boot camp is basically a four week military coding boot camp where kids, um, the youth, are being a, you know, asked and tasked to solve programming challenges for four weeks nonstop. 24-7. The typical, I mean, the best computer programmer, the way you recognize him or her, it's because you have like 25 cups of coffee next to the computer. And this is the kind of people that companies want and that the world wants to be, to be coding for them. Because, you know, to code, you have to spend like days and nights looking through the code, going back into the code, correcting it. And this is the kind of people that we want uh, in our school. We've, we've had incredible support. We've got three founding partners. We have FNB, BBD and Derivco and they've come on board and they've just said we are looking for skills today we cannot find the skills out there and also quite importantly they're looking at this a little bit differently they're not saying you need an honors degree from university anymore they're looking for different ways to find this talent and they've just said we're on board and not only do they provide financial support they also provide internships for our students and a clear path to employment. So, so, what, so that's important. So essentially, that's very important. Essentially, so once they finish, there's a pipelining process where exactly. the corporate can now tap into the person they've invested in. Exactly. They'll wow. study with us for two years. During those two years, they'll do two four-month internships. So at the end of your two years, you would have had eight months of proper work experience internships. And then at the end of the two years, you actually have to work back for your corporate sponsor for a period of two years. Oh, wow. We're in the middle of the CBD where the real buzz and everything is happening. You can see students all around. We're going to chat to a couple of students to see how they feel about fees and how they feel about coding in general. South Africa is, very, is a very diverse uh, country. Yes. There's yes. a lot of poor people. There's a yes. lot of rich people. But for the poor people, they 
they really struggle in attending uh, university because of the fees. Yes. And I think they should be able. They should have. They should get those opportunities to to study for free. Uh, how much time do you spend on social media? Um, I spend like a good fourteen hours a day. 14 hours a day? Yes, I have like four social networks that I'm on, so yeah. And so, we're actually bothering you now. You <laughs> could be on social media. No, today I dedicated my day to like study and stuff, okay. so it's good. So you know how to focus. Mm -hmm. So you believe that there, the next Facebook or the next big Twitter, Instagram or Snapchat could be created by a South African? Yes. So technology and coding is possible in the South African and African context? Mm -hmm. If you we're given that. the opportunity. If you're given the opportunity. Thank you. <laughs> if I say to you, you can create the next Facebook or you can develop an app, like a Twitter app, or you can build a website. That would be awesome. Would you like to do I something would, like that? Would, definitely. And how do you feel about joining a university that would be free for you and you would be sponsored by a company to then work at this, um, at this company after your studies? Very interesting and also it would, it would um, for my parents, be less stress. I'll be able to, you know, get free education, as they've. It's it's something they've always been fighting for. So, I guess it'd be very interesting. So registrations go until when? Until the end of January. So we are actually gonna have three boot camps. One that starts at the end of January, the other one end of February, and the last one at the end of March. Okay. So registration for the first boot camp is going to end end of November, end of December, second boot camp, end of January, yeah. third boot camp. All right. So students still have an opportunity. They can go online now, born2code.co.za. Yes, or SMS code to four double three double six. And you'll assist them with whatever they're going to need. Exactly. But they should go on now because, you know, we're filling up. So we have limited spaces for this. Well, we're really excited about the opportunity. Thanks for your brilliant minds and your passion for this continent. CNBC Africa is grateful that you allowed us to come kick down your doors in the middle of the CBD. Thank you very much. That was Camille and Arlene, co-founders of We Think Code. They are making sure that the next generation of South Africa's untapped talent have an opportunity with a no-fee option. Spoo, this is what we're about, my brother.